monkeypox. Expect to hear this word a lot in the coming weeks, months, maybe even years. Given how the last couple of years have gone, I've got a feeling that things could potentially ramp up quite quickly with this one and narratives are inevitably going to be pushed. So I just wanted to lay out the facts early. Firstly, you're gonna be hearing a lot of people claiming that this virus originated in Africa. There's the Central African strain and the West African strain. Now it is true that this virus can be found in the rainforest in these parts of the continent, spreading mainly through rodents. And the word is, that this potential new outbreak could have come from someone contracting the virus in Nigeria and then traveling back to the UK. Now I can't confirm whether or not this is the true cause of the current outbreak and as I said this video isn't about speculation just about the facts so that you can then go and make your own mind up. So let's talk about the true origins of monkeypox. I'm gonna say it now it does not originate from Africa. Closely related to smallpox monkeypox was actually first discovered in 1958 in Copenhagen Copenhagen, Denmark. Preben von Magnus was a Danish virologist who was studying a group of crab-eating macaque monkeys when there were two separate outbreaks of the disease within his study group. Just to note, these monkeys are naturally found in Asia and not Africa. The association with Africa wasn't actually made until 1970, when the first human case of the virus was officially documented in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Since then, more cases have been reported in Central and Western Africa. However, it's now thought that there have been outbreaks of monkeypox infecting humans for thousands of years. So in what feels like this weird dystopian Groundhog Day, it seems as if the fear-mongering narratives have already begun. US President Joe Biden has claimed that it's something everybody should be concerned about and that it is a concern in that if it were to spread, it would be consequential. And of course, we're working on it hard to figure out what we can do and what vaccine, if any, might be available for it. So what are the actual risks? Well, as I said, there's the Central African African and the West African strains, neither of which seem to have mutated too much in the last 60 odd years since the virus was first isolated. The cases that have been reported recently have been of the West African strain, which is actually the milder of the two. And it's important to note that it's regarded as not really being that infectious amongst humans at all. From each case, potentially one or two other people can be infected before it dies out. Despite this, it seems to have somehow traveled relatively quickly now with cases being documented in Europe, the USA, Canada, and Australia. So somehow it's gone global in a matter of days. Also, it's said that immune deficiency, young age, and pregnancy appear to be risk factors. So pregnant women are more at risk, fair enough. But we're also being told that this virus is spreading largely through sexual contact between gay men. Apparently that all adds up and no further questions. Also, most people seem to recover within a few weeks and the mortality rate is only around 1%. So just to quickly run through the symptoms then. It's mainly the usual stuff like fevers, headaches, muscle aches, tiredness, and of course those characteristic swollen kind of pustules or lesions all over the body, which I won't show because it does look pretty grim and I'm sure you've seen the pictures already. And it's those pustules which are actually the infectious part. So the virus tends to spread through close physical contact with others or sharing things like bedding or clothing, but it can also <laughs> apparently spread through coughing and respiratory droplets as well. And let's just stay with the close contact thing for a minute. Remember the last virus, the one that I probably can't mention if I want this video to stay on YouTube. Well, what we were told about that is to catch it, you had to be exposed to an infected person for around about 15 minutes. Guess how long you have to be in contact with someone to catch monkeypox? Three hours. That is unless you're in direct contact with someone who has an open sore, in which case it can spread more quickly. So for the most part, it is very mild and you're unlikely to catch it from people walking down the street or when you're in the shops, etc. So yeah, the general consensus amongst scientists right now is that this is nothing to panic about. And yet already politicians and the media are painting a very different picture. As I said at the start, I think this message is only going to get more intense. So I just wanted to provide you with this little kind of fact checker video, just so that when you start hearing more about it in the news and stuff like that, and the the likelihood is that it will continue to be reported in ways that stoke fear and division. Just remember the objective facts. Even the way it's being reported on right now on this case by case basis, there's so much attention on it and it does feel very familiar. So that in itself is probably going to spark a lot of fear in a lot of people and maybe a kind of panic mentality that we need to scramble into action. So as always, be conscious of what you're consuming. I've watched some very intense videos with some very dramatic music while researching 
searching for this video. Honestly, it feels more like a Hollywood movie than a news report. But anyway, I've left all my sources in the description box so you can go and do a bit more digging if that's what you're up for. Let me know what you think in the comments as well. Is it something that you are concerned or worried about or have the facts maybe eased your mind just a little bit? Let me know and I'll see you on the next one.